staying at the Orem Hotel here and um, I booked it so it was close to all the major attractions. I don't know if I could get much closer. <laughs> it's crazy. About 30 seconds away from where I'm staying, I walked around the corner and I saw this. So this is the Miri Arab uh, Madrasa, the Kalan Mosque, and the Kalan uh, Minaret. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, this is unbelievable. that early it's eight o'clock in the morning but it's just so I have this place to myself it's crazy um, and these buildings are so big that I'm trying to just take photos on my camera uh, my camera on my phone but I'm getting so much distortion they're huge um, they're just amazing and look at the intricate detail at the top of the minaret like, it is just magnificent I'm learning new words Magnificent. And this is one of the traditional trading domes uh, in Bukhara. Uh, there's a few of them around and um, yeah, later on when um, everything starts to open up, I think it will, will be really cool to go through it and to see what it's like. Here is another one of the bazaars that we're about to walk through, well I'm about to walk through. Um, and yeah, it's actually really interesting to see these, I guess it's peeking behind the curtain when um, when all the stall holders um, haven't put all their put all their stuff out to sell yet, so um, yeah, just a little bit of a, a different view. This is Kalon Mosque, and this is the outside. Isn't it stunning? And I'm going to head in and see what I can find. What is this? He looks at the top. Mongolish uh, and Chinggis Khan cap, winter cap fell below. He made in a uh, boat. The second time, give yourself, uh, give yourself uh, um, uh, cap. Chinggis Khan said, I am... This is the Kalan Mosque and it 
It's really stunning. It is under some refurbishment at the moment. Um, I did grab a guide uh, for 5,000 som and he explained some really interesting details to me. Um, and he did confirm the story of the, oh, you can't see it's behind the tree, of the um, uh, minaret and how Genghis Khan did drop his hat and so he bowed uh, to the um, to the minaret and so he didn't destroy it. Um, but yeah, this is stunning. And I think we're going over to the madrasa and then we'll be going to the ark. I've decided just to hire him for the day. I think it's another 20, uh, 200,000 some. So look, for $25 free guide um, for you know a few hours, it's actually, in my opinion, quite good um, because I'll learn a lot more than just wandering around by myself. The Mi'i Arab Madrasa is still a functioning school to this day. It is a very important school within Uzbekistan and some quite high level figures have studied at this school. Currently, there aren't very many students around at the moment as it is still school holidays. The black you see here on the ceiling is from candles and the soot that has been released. They are not black glazed tiles as one might think because they do look like that. Sent the square, Bukharasin, the title Registan. Registan means send the place. Like Samarkand Registan. Because over there, there's a camel with two hummus. I haven't seen a camel with two hummus before. You can see mosque, Friday mosque. It was built uh, 1711 by Sultan Kuli Khan. Columns original, Karagach. did tell me and there he is in the background talking to someone else now um, was that so Connolly and Stoddart who were British citizens who came here and they were part of um, let's just call it the great game I do have the book called the great game and it's supposed to explain all this but of course I haven't, haven't got around to reading it yet but anyway when I do get around to reading it they were actually executed here in front of the ark so um, that's not a feel-good story but it's a little bit of history I guess the other thing that my guide did tell me was a lot of the walls you'll see in the videos were painted white um, now they've been painted white because they've been restored he did say that the ark has been restored five times 
um, due to damage and it was bombing and conquering and all that type of thing. Um, and so the parts that have been restored are generally white. However, the walls were painted uh, with colours at some point um, prior to being damaged so and restored. But anyway, um, that was really great. I quite enjoyed it. And yeah, I just going to check out Google and see what's next. It's not as hot here as it uh, is out in Kiva, so um, I don't feel the need to rush back to the accommodation and have a nap or anything <laughs> and die of heat exhaustion. Um, so that's great. So um, yeah, let's see what else is out there. the guide said that this was a summer mosque yes and it's also got a name and I can't remember what the name is like it's a special not a special word but it's a word that means uh, uh, top or over um, and so because you're actually looking down over into the pond into the water so it's beautiful here um, it's just I could just sit here <laughs> all day and admire this um, it's yeah it's stunning it's so beautiful oh and I also forgot to say that it was also a residence as well so residence and mosque so I've made my way to Chashmai Ayub mausoleum I hope I said that right um, and it does uh, honor the Muhammad, uh, Muhammad the prophet job think that's what Google told me um, so yeah, it's actually pretty cool uh, I might go check that there's a sign up here that says it's also the museum of the history of Bukhara's water supply so might go in and have a look Muslim and it was built from the first century um, common era so yeah really old and um, yeah, I'll go and have a look. the hotel now um, for a rest while it's in the heat of the day and while I was walking back I thought I'll just check out Google and see if there's anything else to look at on the way and I mean I mean Bukhara right so of course there's things to look at so this is um, Abdullah Khan uh, yep Madrasa which is closed for renovations by the look of it at the moment and then there's also this one which is Madari Khan Madari Khan um, Madrasa also uh, looks like it is also undergoing renovations, but it does still appear to be open. So I might go in and have a
so I've ordered this. I'm not sure what it is again. Uh, and I'm not sure how I'm going to eat it because it's huge and messy. Uh, I already spilled some. Some meat. A bit like a tomato sauce. Really tasty. Um, I think it's parsley. Yeah. Um, I think it's on like a. It's cold. It looks like it's got cheese, lettuce, and like a sour cream. So yeah, that's digging properly, I guess. That's coriander. Oh, so good. So good. So, when I was at the ark with my guide, he said he showed me a photo of um, the minaret uh, after it had been bombed when the Russians invaded. And he said, Go around the back of it and have a look. He said, You'll see the marks. And he's right. You can see those lighter marks, and it directly corresponds to uh, the holes from the bombing and the shelling um, in the photo. So, yeah, that's pretty incredible. If you do come here, make sure you come around and and have a look at the back side of the of the minaret. just telling me that um, the colors in here are original and um, and the reason why they are red and blue as opposed to the more traditional green and blue is because um, of the master he was India Iran from India Iran yeah so um, that is why it's beautiful different colors and um, yeah beautiful isn't it So this is the Abdul Aziz Khan um, Madrasa and it does have a little woodworking museum inside of this one room um, and, but it does have some really cool styling inside so it's quite different from some of the others uh, in terms of the colours that they've used and um, it's different on the outside too it's got pinks and gold and yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty but the museum's only very very small. Oh, and it costs 25000 so This is a little bit um, madrasa. And one thing that I've noticed that I really, really like about this one in particular is these tiles here. They look like um, rope. Uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Really, really just stunning.
our way to Chor Mona Madrasa. And um, it did feel like a little bit of a rabbit warren to get here, but it's probably because I went the wrong way. <laughs> anyway, now what Google tells me is this used to be the gate uh, for a madrasa that no longer exists. So isn't it beautiful? I love it. I love those turrets. They're just, they're amazing. <laughs> You're able to pay a thousand sum and climb up top and have a look at the uh, at the pillars. Oh, this is so cool. across Nadia, Devon Beggy uh, Madrasa and I don't know if you can see but there's some really cool birds in the tile work up there. Oh, so every time I look at a different building here there's just something else that I see that's just absolutely amazing. Within the madrasa, there are artisans and craftsmen at work. They do have their own little individual stores, so you are able to buy directly from the artisans. another pond that is in kind of the centre. Look, I don't even know if this is the centre or not, but there are a lot of monuments around here and a lot of buildings that are just stunning. Um, so if you do find yourself in this part of Booker, which you will undoubtedly because it's, it's near where everything is, <laughs> make sure you come down here. It's a really lovely atmosphere. So in economics, one of the indexes for determining uh, how well off, I guess you can say, a country is, is comparing uh, like uh, food and drinks and other items across um, different countries. And so I just bought this 500ml bottle of um, Coke Zero, because no sugar, so I've got to get zero. <laughs> Which is a little bit harder to come by here than I um, realised, uh, but... Um, I just bought that for 6,000 song, so that is 50 US cents or 77 Australian cents. In Australia, I know that I couldn't buy this probably for less than $4.50. So, yeah, it's, it, economics is interesting and scary and <laughs> makes it all go around. So I decided to tell us to eat. I might as well have some dinner. I ordered something called Olive Olivia. Olivia? Olivia. And it's like a 
potato salad with chicken. So, I've seen it a couple times on menus. Uh, I haven't tried it yet because I've always had something else I wanted to try more. Um, so here it goes. <laughs> potato salad is one of my favorite things. So, yeah, this is really good. Even with the peas on top. Oh. I've got pickle and egg, onion, cucumber, mayonnaise. Oh, really good. And I also ordered a samsa, which is a beef, it's got beef in it. Oh, that's a bit runny. Um, it's like a samosa, I guess. Dill. The dill just really mm, pops it off. I've also got a soup coming. So, a lot of food, but I'm, I'm trying to try everything that I can possibly try. <laughs> and now my horse has arrived. I, mm, I can't show it, but there it is. There it is. So it's a soup. Um, I think it's got beef, um, vegetables, and sour cream. I think it's good. oh red cabbage. That's right. Yeah. So I'm excited for this one. Yeah, this one. I mean, don't get me wrong. The potato salad, also awesome. Bought, mm, amazing as well. Smarter we. Oh, really, really good. again today. Uh, I'm here for about two and a half days and I did see a lot of the real major sites yesterday um, but today I am just heading off in the opposite direction and I'm gonna just see what I can find because there's just lots of stuff like this um, just everywhere. So uh, yeah I guess let's get into it. It's gonna be a warm one today I think. Oh, it's gonna be good. of an old bathhouse as well as a caravanserai. So a caravanserai was like an old inn where people in the caravans would stop and rest after the day and, um, and normally ruins are super impressive <laughs> but uh, here where there's so many restored beautiful buildings um, I hate to say it but uh, they do become a little less impressive. <laughs> one of the other minarets in the city um, and it's the Kojic Kalon minaret and the mosque. Now the mosque is completely hollowed out on the inside uh, and it looks like it's under repairs. You can probably hear in the background there's some grinding going on um, but this one this minaret is not as tall as the other one. Um, still just as pretty 
and yeah, pretty much as impressive. And in this square as well, there is this pond. Can't really see it, but there is a, a lovely pond there and another madrasa. So it's really cool here, beautiful breeze, um, just really nice atmosphere. Oh, besides the grinding. <laughs> Um, just across the road um, from the mosque and minaret that we were just looking at and this is the Olam John Caravan Saray. So um, yeah, it's a site where weary travellers used to stay. So let's go have a look. to the State Museum and um, it says it's open but there's a whole bunch of these film they say Bay Room film on them trucks and the doors locked so I think I've stumbled oh and I also saw like a big trolley full of like cameras and booms and stuff so I think I've like stumbled into a like a, a TV set movie set but I'm really disappointed because I love museums and I really really wanted to go um, it has some good reviews on Google, so I'm a little bit disappointed, but, uh, <sighs> you know, onwards and upwards. <laughs> this is the Turkey Jandy uh, Mausoleum, uh, where Sheikh Turkey Jandy is uh, entombed. So, um, it is apparently a, a sacred site. Uh, it's got a sacred well inside, and it's also one of the most um, important shrines in Bukhara as per the sign. So um, it's really, it's just a really nice little quiet place where you can just sit for a, a few minutes and just um, soak it all in. gates to the city although it has been somewhat restored uh, if uh, even if completely rebuilt now my guide yesterday was telling me that um, the gates to the cities would actually point in the direction um, and they were called whatever it was that they were pointing in the direction of so there is a Samarkand gate that's on the opposite side of the old town um, and yeah and then there's this one it says old Dwaza on um, on Google Maps which means old gate uh, so I don't actually know what direction this one's pointing but anyway it's uh it's just yeah it's pretty cool I can just imagine the city with these gates and then the big walls and um, yeah it would look amazing Uh, very popular and um, so it's basically rice, 
uh, vegetables and meat, uh, lamb I think. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Really subtle, but um, yeah, subtle but delicious. Mm. The meat just melts in your mouth. Oh, it's so good. This is delicious. Really, really good. Make sure you try. It's got to be on the top of the list of things to try. So I ventured back out again. Um, it is still really hot. It's about 37, um, but at least the shadows are a bit longer, so you've got somewhere in the shade to walk. My arms are um, getting a little bit burned, so I probably should have been a lot more sun safe, but I'm out and I've come to what is called the Zindon or the dungeon, which I think is just another word for a prison. So I'm puffed because I just walked up some stairs. Stairs just do it to me every time. I can walk all day, but give me a stare and I'm puffed. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to going in and having a quick look. and I don't necessarily know if it's these type of whips or if it's cowboy whips but um, the whip that you hear that at the end when it hits the ground or whatever that's actually a, um, a sonic boom because uh, it's moving faster than the speed of sound so I heard about that in the podcast thought it was pretty cool that I'd share <laughs> structure. Um, it did cost 20,000 sort of to get in. Um, you don't need much time there but it's still really cool just to have a quick look around and you know for two dollars it's it's kind of um, a no-brainer just gives you something else to look at something a little bit different so yeah. All right now I think there's one last thing I'm going to go to today and that's the water tower and climb that. I still think it might be a little bit too bright so I might sit down find somewhere nice to have a drink, relax and then once the sun goes, goes down a little bit more, then I'll probably climb up the tower.
cool up here. It's um, you can just see for so far. Um, one of the things my guide was telling me was the um, minarets acted a little bit like a, a lighthouse back in the day because they were the tallest structure around. So people would know where they were or, um, or when they were getting to somewhere because they would be able to see, there it is, the minaret. And um, so yeah, so they're multi-purpose. towards the hotel so I can find somewhere to have dinner. At the park across the road from the water tower, I spot the cutest chess set I think I've ever seen. How cute is this? And as dusk is falling, it is just a great place to be. On the way back, I get this great idea to do a time lapse. This footage is about 27 seconds long but it took about 90 minutes to record. <laughs> How crazy is that? To be absolutely honest, I am still full from dinner. It's about 7.45 and I still don't have room. So I'm gonna have a girl dinner tonight and I'm going to get an ice cream because I just, I can't eat. <laughs> the full meal today that pillow for puff was just so filling and delicious the best girl dinner honestly ice cream it's my last day in Bukhara and so I am going to head over to the Central Bazaar and I'm also going to go see um, a bit of the old wall. So, well the old <laughs> outer wall. So uh, the arc is kind of the inner and yeah, I'm going to go to the outer. And um, I just stopped here just to admire it and also there's a street photographer and I thought I'd get a photo. I don't know um, how good the photo is going to look but you know what? It's a, it's a memory and um, travelling solo sometimes is a bit hard because you don't, besides selfies, you don't really get a lot of photos of yourself. I mean, I could probably get a tripod, but it seems like a lot of effort. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, a couple of minutes to wait and then I'm heading off. And um, it's just like a big, a big market and um, lots of things on sale. And just walking around, the smell of the spices and like cinnamon and oh, it's just, it's incredible. It's, um, it's really nice and it's hustling and bustling. And I haven't had breakfast yet. So I did go past a, a store that sold some pastries, a bakery. <laughs> like a bakery and um, and I thought I would grab some breakfast um, and let's try it out. It looks like a, a hot dog or a French fry. Mm, that's exactly what it is. I know about hot dogs at 
you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. And then I got this one as well. I had no idea what it is. I don't know if that's like... Maybe. still tasty but um yeah <laughs> I don't know what else to say um but yeah um after here I'm going over to the wall so yeah I'm just gonna wander around here for a little bit longer and check it all out the market was great um I was able to pick up a few things and by a few things I mean some pieces of fruit uh, the market, the Chozu Bazaar that I went to in Tashkent, it just seemed to be meat and spices and nuts and stuff. Whereas this one had a lot more fresh food. Um, so I bought the most delicious peaches. And I bought something else that I hadn't seen before, um, which is this pear. This beautiful, beautiful red pear. So I'm really looking forward to eating that. And... She also threw in a couple of these little apples for free, which was really lovely. So, um, I've got some fruit. I've got probably way too much fruit because I'm only here for another four, uh, oh, no, five days, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to eating it. I love fruit. Uh, peaches are my favourite. And right next door to the bazaar is Telepok um, Fortress Gate, which is under construction. Well, no, sorry, not construction. Under restoration. And... Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty impressive and it's a fair distance from the Ark. Like, it, it took me, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to walk here. And uh, so it's probably about a kilometre. But it's, um, yeah, I'm going to walk around the perimeter of what's here and take some photos and videos and, yeah, just imagine what it would have been like back in the day. Museum, I think, for oh, folk decorative arts. So I'm really already loving the facade because it's got purple in it instead of just the blue and green. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get in there and have a look. Looks really cool. is actually the summer palace of the last demise of Bukhara and now the one thing that um, okay this might sound a bit silly but um, Amir Timur who uh, founded the um, empire the Timur empire with the Timurids um, I actually thought Amir was his first name but it turns out uh, that's not what Amir means it's actually the ruling the name that's given to a ruling person like a king so, look, every day is a school day, learning something new every day. Anyway, look at this. This is the reception room. Oh, amazing. Amazing.
fill the room and it's blue and it's beautiful. I could just imagine having this as a conservatory, reading books, drinking tea. Oh, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> So there are three museums here. There is the main house, the bedroom house, and the guest house. So make sure you check out all three of them if you do come here. And um, yeah, they're pretty fascinating. I don't even know where to start or how to start. Oh my goodness, this is going to be messy. It's just a cheeseburger. I mean, it's not just a cheeseburger. It is a gigantic cheeseburger. I didn't get any meat. It's got bun. Let's try again. Wow. Mm. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Okay, that was really good. I did look back on the video though and did see all the drips of mayonnaise and sauce off my fingers. So apologies, it was a bit gross. Um, anyway, I'm now going to go to the um, Palace of the Emir of, Buk of the Amir of Bukhara. It is literally across the road. Uh, it is abandoned, uh, but you can go in and have a look at, uh, around. Um, I don't think inside, but you know, from the outside at least, uh, and have a look over there. Okay, so this is the side of the palace. Um, and all I can say is that it is so hot. It's about 38 degrees, um, but yeah, lots of walking around, but it's so hot. All I'm doing is moving from one shady patch to the next shady patch, taking the photo, moving to the next one. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going inside the train station where it will be nice and air conditioned. Okay. I am back at Bukhara uh, train station, ready to catch a train over to Samarkand for the next leg. Um, and I'll be in Samarkand for three days and on the fourth day I'll be heading home. Yeah, I'm very, very excited about this part of the trip. I mean, it's all been amazing so far. It's exceeded any expectations I ever had, but this next leg, it's gonna be great. Made it to Samarkand, which is the final part of my trip. I'll be here for three days, three full days, and I am super, super excited. This, to me, is the is the bit I've been waiting for this whole time. <laughs> 